for sending anti-Trump texts. He's involved in this investigation and works for the FBI, hates the president apparently, and sent text messages to a colleague, and now he's been fired. But right. not before they discovered some things about him. Yeah, yeah, Peter, no yeah, Peter Strzok's his name, and he's the number two counterintelligence official at the FBI. And he seems to be in the nexus of everything that mattered from the summer to the fall to the winter. So who is he? Well, he oversaw and participated in the questioning of General Michael Flynn in January. Of course, that's when uh, Flynn said something that wasn't right, and they got him on that. He changed Comey's draft language from grossly negligent to extremely careless. Now, the reason for that is the word grossly negligent is criminal. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Uh, Chuck Grassley, the chairman of the Senate uh, Judiciary Committee, had been looking into the edits on the, the Comey uh, statement. And the way the, the documents work is you can tell changes were made. And he's going who made that change? And they said, uh, we'll look into it. Turns out it was this Peter Strzok guy. And when you look at all the things this single man has been involved in, it looks like he didn't like the president, the current president. He liked Hillary. And it looks like he kind of had his thumb on the scale. Well, Sarah Carter's reporting today, Liz, also that he interviewed General Flynn. Yeah. So he not only was an anti-Trumper, he was pro-Hillary Clinton, according to the reports. Uh, so, as far as I'm concerned, both investigations have been irredeemably compromised by the presence of this individual on the investigations. And not he was no clerk, he was running the Clinton investigation, essentially, and as a top counterintelligence official in the FBI, certainly was key in the collusion investigation uh, by, FB by the FBI and later Mr. Mueller. Uh, so, you know, I don't believe that Mr. Flynn lied. I don't believe General Flynn lied. I believe he was ambushed by the uh, Comey Yates Justice Department, and the FBI reportedly concluded initially he wasn't lying. All of a sudden, it was decided that he was lying. I tell you, this investigation's a mess. Mueller, by the way, removed this man from his position back in July. Why is it we're only finding out about it now? My guess is the IG report into political politicization of the FBI is due or is about done. And they leaked it up ahead of time. Mueller needs to answer some questions about the involvement of this person in all these key decisions from the dossier, Clinton emails, obviously, the uh, targeting of Flynn and subsequent prosecution of him. What a disaster. The president needs to take it, take, step in. Frankly, I'd consider a pardon of Mr. Flynn, and I'd shut down the Mueller investigation at this point. All right, guys, we are loaded up tonight. You are not going to want to miss one moment of this show. But first, we're only now learning why former FBI director Jim Comey contorted himself to not indict Hillary Clinton regarding her use of a private email server during her time as secretary of state. Tonight, we can tell you that it appears that the FBI's lead investigator and deputy chief of counter intel has been revealed to be just another Clinton crony and Trump hater. Peter Strzok was found to have exchanged anti-Trump texts during the 2016 presidential debates with another colleague at the Justice Department, this according to the New York Times. And get this, he attended Hillary's pre-4th of July interview that was never transcribed, and he reportedly urged Comey to strike the phrase grossly negligent to describe Hillary Clinton's handling of classified information. He softened it to extremely careless. Although we did not find clear evidence that Secretary Clinton or her colleagues intended to violate laws governing the handling of classified information, there is evidence that they were extremely careless in their handling of very sensitive, highly classified information. Unbelievable. And this gets better. This same partisan official was one of the lead investigators assigned to the bureau's Trump-Russia inquiry. He was very busy. And not only that, he was also part of the interview team that questioned Trump National Security Advisor Mike Flynn on January 24th. Huh, what a coincidence. This guy is just everywhere. But wait, there is more. Mr. Strzok was a, is a pal of Comey's. He wasn't taken off the case by special counsel Robert Mueller until this past summer in July. 
So why the heck didn't Mueller inform the public, given the stakes involved and the need for public trust in this investigation? Why didn't he tell anybody? This guy was, was writing anti-Trump texts during the debates. So much for transparency. And of course, let's not forget, we have a gaggle of anti-Trump, pro-Hillary prosecutors who are still working for Mueller right now. My friends, this is unacceptable, it's disgusting, and it's unfair. Tonight, I urge the DOJ's inspector general, who seems like a terrific guy, Michael Horowitz, to release a full transcript of Mr. Strzok's text, and maybe even those of other key Clinton and Russia investigators. Now remember, this is the same man who helped lead the investigation into the so-called Trump-Russia collusion, this Mr. Strzok character. I have a question. How can anyone at this point, just learning this fact and the other facts that we've cited on this show, trust the Mueller office at this point? No transparency. They're not telling us the truth about this. And we're only learning it when the inspector general somehow releases this information to the public. Since the Mike Flynn plea deal just last week, the media experts are predicting Oh, it's curtains. It's over for the Trump presidency. R.I.P. Donald Trump's political life. But I'll tell you what's obvious. Here it is. Although Flynn did lie, the collusion case died. So now they're on to the so-called obstruction of justice case against President Trump. The experts think it's all cut and dry. Just by the public record, there's one piece of evidence for obstruction of justice after another, and this seems to be exhibit one. That seems to be in the territory of obstruction of justice. I think what we're beginning to see is the putting together of a case of obstruction of justice. Oh, move over, F. Lee Bailey. <laughs> now, so how worried should Trump be at this point? Well, time will tell. We don't really know at this point. But consider that the media and legal and political experts who are predicting Trump's impeachment, they also predicted this about the president's travel ban. There's an, a discriminatory intent here, and the discriminatory intent of the Trump administration is clear. It was uh, uh, premised on religious discrimination. It's very clear that the president is acting unconstitutionally. You said we don't want to ban any ba on the basis of no, religion, and that's against our Constitution, yes, it is. but that's exactly what they're doing. Thank you for calling it what it is. I, I, I'm going to call it what it is. It's a Muslim ban. Well, today, a refreshingly sane order by the Supreme Court on President Trump's so-called travel ban of six mostly Muslim countries. Well, the court declined to halt the ban despite rulings in two different lower courts. This was a preliminary, but nevertheless a major victory for President Trump, who always had the constitutional right to determine the classes of people who can and cannot enter the country for security reasons. Now, once again, the experts are wrong. And while the media has a case of the vapors, a total meltdown over Flynn's cooperation with Mueller, the president is racking up win after win. Tax cuts are coming. Retail is soaring this Christmas season. The market is way up. And now a key win at the Supreme Court. And it's only Monday, my friends. And that's the end. People have the right to assume the people that are investigating them are objective and have not already made up their minds. That's why we need to see the text and we need to interview this special agent. But the bureaus had a really bad last 18 months. And, and, and this, um, this makes it worse, frankly. Robert Ray is with us, federal prosecutor. Robert, you heard what he just said, and this is the discussion point that we want to get your take on. That one aide, that one investigator that was on the Hillary, email, uh, the Hillary Clinton email investigation, uh, was political. He didn't like Trump. He was sending anti-Trump texts to his friends, colleagues, and now he's reassigned. He's in the HR department. Well, which everybody can agree you shouldn't do. I mean, I suppose we all have political views. The mistake is uh, voicing, them. voicing them and making them public, and certainly in text messages, you know, that's a, that's a bad idea. Why is it a bad idea? Because it undermines public confidence in the fairness of the investigation. Now, you know, let's not overstate it either. It's one FBI agent now. He had a, you know, I think a, a significant role, 
but ultimately, with regard to the Mueller investigation, Mueller's the one who makes the decisions, not FBI agents. Yeah, but it's all wrapped up in all of these other things that happened at that time. Loretta Lynch advising Jim Comey, call this investigation a matter. Don't call it an investigation. Meanwhile, it is a criminal investigation. And then the interview on the tarmac, they talked about grandkids. I mean, a lot of just stuff that should not be going on if you're talking about doing a truthful investigation. Well, that's why you have to act quickly. I mean, I, I'm sure that Bob Mueller understands and his actions reflect that he does understand how damaging that can be. And that's why you have to take action and remove somebody um, from the investigation. It's unfortunate. Um, you know, look, in, in the Michael Flynn investigation, I just heard the president's comments. Uh, and understandably, he's you know comparing and contrasting what happened to Michael Flynn versus what happened. Right? With is that Bernard a fair to... comparison? Well, he said his, Michael Flynn's life is ruined, and Hillary Clinton lied, and she's okay. Well, I you know Hillary Clinton was had the benefit of counsel. She appeared for an FBI interview at the very end of the investigation, and many of her answers were in the you know the neighborhood of I don't recall, I don't remember. You know, unfortunately, well, was it wasn't even on the record. I well, mean, there was no, no notes any, any, about it. Anytime you talk to the FBI, it's on the record. It doesn't have to be <laughs> under oath, as Michael uh, you know, Flynn has Ryan found out. Found out the hard way. Is a federal it's crime. A federal crime. It is. It, you do not have to be under oath. Correct. It carries the same penalty as perjury. Martha Stewart went to jail, right. went to prison That's for right. lying to federal investigators. And, and, and Michael Flynn pled guilty to that. But what about already? knowing when someone lied to? And that was what that last question that was shouted at the president was all about. Right. The Judge Napolitano was on with us earlier and said he thought with his now infamous tweet over the weekend, President saying had to fire General Flynn because he lied to the vice president and the FBI, that he did open himself up to an obstruction of justice investigation. I, for the what life do you think? of me, don't understand what that point is about. I mean, I have to say, you know, and take any company in America, if, if an employee doesn't cooperate with an investig a, a lawful law enforcement investigation and moreover lies during that investigation, what are you supposed to do? You fire the person. Right. That's what the president right. did. So what's the argument that somehow by firing him, well, that's there, I guess their argument is it, it gives a motive to, to go ahead with the firing of Comey afterwards. Well, well but the likes of Diane Feinstein and even Mark Warner, they've been looking for a reason to start talking about obstruction of justice charges. And I don't and, see it. And so, you it, know, this, look. I, I, for the I life of me, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I don't say how that possibly adds up. What would you prefer? You would rather have him still employed as the, as the, uh, the head of NSA? I mean, you know, seriously. And then well, once he lied to the vice president, and the vice president went out and, and and talked about what he said. I mean, it was wrong. And he gave to him do that. the, he what, gave him the chance. I, I, right. I think the issue that that Connell was talking about is the suggestion that he knew that he had lied to the FBI because right. he said FBI as well as well, vice I president. I don't think there really was any. Question question about that from before. Remember now, the reason that we know Michael Flynn lied, unbeknownst to Michael Flynn at the time, was that his conversations were being intercepted. Right. And so therefore, they knew, I mean, the White House knew, Sally Yates knew, Sally Yates brought it to the attention of the White House counsel that the Department of Justice knew for certainty that he lied because the conversations were recorded. For example, larger question, why did he lie? Wouldn't you think someone like General Flynn would have um, suspected that as well? With his, you know, his well, background? two things. Apparently, no. He apparently figured or didn't realize that his right. conversations were being recorded. And second, four days after the inauguration, I, for the life of me, don't understand why he'd go to an FBI interview without a lawyer present. Yep. So, you know, and that's what happens. You know, as we discussed at the outset, mm -hmm. lying to FBI agents is bad. It's a federal so, so felony. So what's your take? Give us the bottom line on this investigation as you see it today. Where does this stand? Because on Friday there was a lot of misreporting, uh, which, of course, sent the market lower. And then ABC had to come out and, and, and clarify. And, and, so and then the market figured it out and recognized yeah. that there's really a, a whole lot of, you know, non-story here. It's significant that he's cooperating with the investigation. You can't minimize the significance of that. On the other hand, uh, if, you know, for a cooperating witness to plead guilty, the, the, the general drill is the government charges you with everything that they've got. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be put in a position later on where, you know, he's going to cooperate and testify against somebody else with regard to, for example, a conspiracy that he doesn't plead guilty to. So what I thought was notable out of all of this is they charged him with a false statement. They did not charge him with conspiracy to violate the Logan Act. Right. They didn't charge him with anything else. Suggest to me that... You know, whatever else may be going on, they don't have it yet. Right. And the it is collusion. Yeah. And collusion, again, in my mind, is limited to only one thing. That is, Russian officials would have to be in a situation negotiating with members of the transition team or the campaign 
where this is what we will do for you right. in exchange for this is what the administration will do for us when they take office. And if it was there, it would have been leaked already. And, a long time and if ago. it was there, it would have already been leaked. <laughs> of course. And, and if, and on, if Michael F and if Michael Flynn had it, he'd have pleaded guilty. We're still to talking it. about this. It's incredible, Robert. Yeah.